Welcome to Finding the Voices. And today we have a special guest speaker joining me from Thaubal, Manipur. Her name is Saya Okram and she's a freelance researcher and has done PhD in public health. A believer of M.K. Gandhi's quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. So I would like to welcome Saya Okram as a special guest speaker for today's series of 1001 Thagachari. Hello, welcome Saya. Hi, Hi thank you. How thank are you? you? Thank you for this opportunity. I'm good. I'm All happy right. to be here again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, me and Saya, we had tried to do the recording earlier and today is our second attempt. And because of the connectivity back in Manipur, we are trying right now, which is 10.30 p.m. for Saya. <laughs> <laughs> so we try different option because we won't give up. We want to make our project work out no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hand over the mic to you and let you share a little bit about yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Saya Okram. I'm currently living in Thaubal, Manipur. I'm a freelance researcher and I have done my PhD in public health from Zawarlan Nehru University, New Delhi. So uh, as I said before, like uh, I'm right now with my parents after completing my almost a year nomadic journey, traveling around and they yeah, are backpacking. So yeah, and I love reading books, especially about traveling. So anything related with traveling really fascinated. I am going to dive directly into our gratitude project questionnaire. Yes. Um, so to start with, um, please go ahead and nominate your gratitude for a person around you at the personal level. Yeah, for the for the person around me whom I would like to express my gratitude, I have nominated the children of the ashram sala in Gandhi Ashram, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. So uh, these are the children I have spent around two to three months during my pilgrimage journey in India. I was volunteering in these organizations uh, called Manav Sadhana, where these children are giving the, uh, these organizations were giving the children uh, help about the education, providing them lodging and fooding. And these children are from the background which are known as untouchable, as they believe in Indian caste system. And they are usually from underprivileged section of the society. So I had this opportunity to spend time with them and I was helping them in their uh, school work and teaching them in whichever way I can help. And uh, they, during those three months, I had a lot of sharing and lots of observation from these children. So I would like to share a little bit about them. And uh, these children are usually from the uh, underprivileged section of the society, which were, are discriminated being a girl, even by their family, their father and relatives and community. So in many of the incidents, they were even attempted to kill by their family for being just the children. So I was going, there was lots of going on uh, with the sharing of these stories. And one of the stories that really touched me was how much no matter how much struggle they are having in their life, they are like they always want to go back at home when their holiday season comes because home is always a home. And this little girls told me that even if like uh, they get lots of hardship from their family, from their parents, but they are so thankful to their parents because of giving them this life and because of that, they are able to experience this beautiful of the life and the universe. So they really taught me these small things and small values and how they help each other. And so they really taught me the value of interconnectedness in human community. And then and it's like really touching because living this individual and then everyday life, we are hardly have the time to notice them but you i really got to learn all these meaningful and small beautiful things of the life so i would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude for teaching me this value of life and yeah so 
thank you to all the children and thank you for this opportunity that's awesome thank you so much for sharing about the ashram in fact i didn't know about the ashram and i was uh, very curious you know when i saw the picture so how long were you there in the ashram uh, i was there like uh, around 3 months on and off i went to travel in the weekends and came back so i was just, uh, staying there for nearly 3 months and how many children are there in the ashram um, at that time, there was around 109, and uh, lots of the more than half were girls. There was like around 20, 25 like that. Only boys were like that. So or they are all from all the age group. Like uh, the the class standard start from around by one first standard till like eighth standard. Okay, so, they go so to nearby government schools. Okay, so in this ashram, they are given the footing and lodg lodging, but they go and yeah. go to, you know, nearby school for their education. Yeah. Yes, uh, the school is, uh, this resident is uh, just inside the Sabamati ashram. Uh, and where, where actually the place is where Mahatma Gandhi actually started uh, a boarding school for the Harizan girls. Oh. So it's a very important place for them. Got it. Yeah, got it was it. really like uh, good experience to be in the exact place where Mahatma Gandhi started it. So. Right, right. So, uh, what was your exact role when you stayed in the ashram? What did you do? Uh, my, uh, I was actually involved in different projects. Uh, for this one, uh, whenever the kids are before going to school or after coming back from the school, so I used to help them with their school, like homework and different kinds of activities, like engaging them into value-based education and just by simply giving them my time so that they can share and play with them. So even like have fun together. So any sort of thing they wish to do, yeah, I used to spend time like that with them. Yeah, that's so awesome. You know, the concept of yeah. giving time. Um, I think this is something we undervalue. But, you know, in, in what you are sharing with us, your experience um, with the girls in the ashram, uh, it looks to be a very awesome experience yeah. both for you the giver as well as both you know on the other side for the girls too so you learn yeah. from them and they learn from you yeah. so it was uh, a really really awesome sharing from both the side yeah it was a really altruistic kind of a experience where we human be behavior is actually so i learned a lot from them yeah, Instead that's of them learning from me. No, it's awesome. Yeah, I'm so inspired by your project and your participation. And I'm sure like a lot of listeners who are listening to us would be inspired because sometimes, you know, we are so caught up in our own life. We don't think about ways how we can help and how our time can be helpful. And I think this is one of the great example. And I'm so proud that you brought it up here at Finding the Voices. Yeah, I also had this intention about like sharing, sharing this concept of volunteering. I mean, even if you don't have money, it's, it's okay if as long as you have time and you can just volunteer and do some service and in exchange, like you learn a lot. So I wanted to bring this kind of awareness among the people of Manipur also. Yeah, I, I agree absolutely 100% with you. And just to share, um, some of my experience here in the United States, um, many of the events, you know, like say when I go for running, the running events or any community based event, they are all volunteers. And like you yes. said, you know, like it builds the community and also you're engaging yourself. And um, I'm, I'm so proud that, you know, we have young people like you thinking about bringing this concept uh, within Manipur. So great. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next one. And the next one we have gratitude for a person who have contributed for Manipur. Yes, uh, for this one, for someone who has contributed for Manipur, I have nominated you, Isay Monica Ingudam, for defining the voice <laughs> talk so Because, yeah, it's like... Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, what you are doing it. I mean, even if you are not in our state, even you're not in homeland, you are do, you are using the 
I mean, all the possible ways to connect the people and to make the people aware about Manipur and hearing the voice of the unheard, like so many people who are like really talented and who really need attention. But like, you know, we don't really have the platform, especially like when I think about when I was thinking about whom to choose for Manipur, it, you just came up in my mind. And, <laughs> I mean, I didn't have any other other reason to think but simply for this project like Thagat City 1001, because it was very unusual after my journey of volunteering in different parts of the India and country. I was like thinking about like this kind of concept, which is so much lacking in our society, especially in Manipur. So we hardly talk very openly about Thagatjari and expressing our gratitude, even if we feel inside it. And then everybody is talking so much about asking for their rights and asking <laughs> for this inequality and asking for so many kind of social problems. But like nobody actually talk in with a voice about this project. So when I saw this, your updates in Instagram, I was like, I just messaged you within one second that I want to be part of it. It's like, <laughs> this is, I think, the need of the hour for our human community at the moment. Because we are so absorbed with all this, I should say, the materialistic thing, and I should say something which we can touch and see. But I, how, how we feel about somebody, I, feel, I think that expressing with words really has so much of power. So just simply for this project, I'm, I'm like, I'm so grateful to you that you are bringing this up. And I'm so amazed that so many people are signing up. So many people are joining the Facebook group and viewing the all this talk show. And many people are inquiring you again about how can I join about this project? And I can see the ripples of this kindness and ripples of this compassion and gratitude going on among the people through your soul. So I was like, I'm really, really grateful that you are doing this, this to this to all the young people of Manipur and as well as all the platform across all the different sections who are able to access internet. So that's why I'm like, I was like, ah, I should, I, I should, I should be, you know, very thankful for this that somebody in Manipur is doing something like this for the people. <laughs> so I, so I really want to take this opportunity to say my gratitude, to express my gratitude for bringing out such a very, I should say, is still there, but unforgotten kind of feeling among the human community. So thank you very much, Jay, for this project. I really thank wish you. you all the best. And just yeah. for our listeners and viewers, I am as surprised as you when I saw mm -hmm. Saya nominating me. Um, so I didn't bribe her. <laughs> No, you were just like this thing. I, I had to do it in one second. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I, um, like you said, you know, we are so focused. Of course, um, you know, the conflict is there, the unrest is there, the effect of what happens in Manipur in different corners is there. But yeah. I believe that it is important to uh, maintain the balance and bring up the positivity through gratitude yeah. and um, yeah. I have been reading a lot of books and I have gone to many workshop and seminar and many of the things, positive things, uh, stems from gratitude. And, you know, yeah. like I shared, you know, five years I have been going around and interviewing the people of Manipur and I do see a lack of um, gratitude, recognition, yeah. you know, just a simple yeah. uh, thing about simple words saying that hey thank you you know you're doing great or i love your work i think that goes a long way um, and i'm so happy like you said uh, finding the voices it's been five years but what's amazing is it is powered by people like you uh, because here i am you know sitting in one corner uh, in the united states and i'm able to manage this because i get yeah. support from people like you your voice and uh, it's truly a virtual community for all of us to um, be together and share our thoughts. And I have been trying to um, 
enhance it, elevate it, um, you know, the voices. And I'm so thankful to TV channel mm -hmm. like ISTV, who has been partnering with us and elevating the voices and also to Manipur Times. But I would like to bring our show and our voices at the national and international level mm -hmm. and, you know, at national TV channels like Durdashan and so that, you know, more people mm -hmm. will know about our voices. So hopefully some of our listeners would be able to help us out with that yeah. part. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really thankful this platform and this space you have created for all of us through this project. Um, I, you, I, there's so many reasons to be grateful, to express my gratitude to you, but this project itself is enough for me. You know, oh. to dominate you as someone. <laughs> yeah, very thank thankful. you. No, I'm so thankful. And um, like I said, um, there are a lot of ideas and shows I would like mm. to come up with, and you know, with time, uh, mm. with like minded people like you and you know, everybody who has been supporting. I'm sure you know, we are going to create uh, yeah. this platform yeah. bigger and connect all of us. Thank uh -huh. you. All right, so I think I should move on to the next one. Otherwise, everybody will be like, okay, she so wants to talk <laughs> about this nomination <laughs> for a long time. All right, so yeah, the next uh, one is the gratitude for a person at the global level who have inspired you. Yeah. So for, for this one who have inspired me at the global level, I have nominated His Holiness the Dalai Lama. He has been like I have been following him and trying to go, especially in India, wherever place he goes to deliver the talk, following him, like almost stalking him. So it's like uh, his books and his quotes and his word really inspired me. He's one of the person who makes me think about who I want to be and how I want to live about and all the things that uh, the all the, my all my volunteering endeavors, all my backpacking journeys, and all my this nomadic life that I had lived before, and it's all inspired by him. Because, and like the way I said before, it's like in this world, he really brings the balance of humanity and humanity power and materiality. So I'm inspired by his wisdom. I'm inspired by his inspirations and the kind of compassion and he talked about the kind of the kindness and compassion and love that he preached in our human human community. It's something like which I really feel is the most crucial thing that we human beings really need to balance this society. So and I mean so he is one of the person that really inspired me in that way. And then I should say he's the kind of person like since I started following him for past almost seven, eight years, he's the kind of person who is really shaping me the way that I want to live. And lots of his quotes are like so much of the reality that we tend to forget. For example, like he says this funny quotes like uh, we human beings are so funny that we put the alarm to wake up early tomorrow. But you never know that tomorrow will come early or the afterlife as they believe in Buddhism. So human life is so short that you live at the fullest today. It doesn't mean that do something good. This is what he always talk about. So this kind of things really inspire me to live by doing good in everyday life and by doing something very small that can really impact in a big way. So yeah. He's the one person who really calms me when I'm like, uh, you know, when I really like have troubles. And so I nominated him to be the person which I would like to express my gratitude at the global level for inspiring me in any way in guiding me my path. That's awesome. So have you ever met him or seen him from yeah. far? Yes. How, how was that him. experience? Tell me. I mean, like, it, it, it's so surreal. I mean, like, I couldn't believe it was really real thing that really he's really standing in front of me kind of thing. Because uh, actually he came for a, a con talk in our university, our Lanier University, two years back. So all the students were there standing in line trying to take his blessing. So it was like I met him like around seven, eight times. 
So wow, that was the you're first lucky. time I met him. <laughs> yeah, because I used to follow him wherever he goes, especially in India. So yeah. I used to go to his teaching in Dharamsala and all. So it was like a very different feeling. I mean, yeah. You don't feel like it was real to see him in front. And when he started talking, and then when he started giving lecture, I feel like we, we all feel like he is one of us, not a spiritual leader or not a political leader of Tibet or nothing in that way. He was just a simple human being trying to communicate with another another human being in such a compassionate and such a kind and a very simple way. So this is what I really like about him. He really talks in a very, in such a level that everybody can understand. So yeah, I am really, really like grateful to him that just like, you know, that we are born in the same time that the Dalai Lama still exists in this world. So I'm very grateful for being yeah. born in his time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome because, you know, I'm also uh, inspired by yeah. his words and um, mm -hmm. I did go to Dharamsala and I was hoping to meet uh -huh. him but unfortunately I couldn't meet him but at least I got to experience the place so I hope mm -hmm. that in future uh, you know I'll get to see him in person even if it is from yeah. far away <laughs> <laughs> yeah excellent choice yeah. excellent choice all right, so let's move on um, to the last question I have. Um, this is to encourage the art of expression. And I want to give you the opportunity to express anything you want on any topic. Uh, so for this one, there's lots of things that I want to share. But uh, I, since we are already in this topic of gratitude, there is one thing that I learned during my journey during my uh, all this uh, service journey is like when we talk about gratitude there is a story that i want to share like for example i mean we ask somebody what do you have for dinner today and someone said that oh i have caves or cauliflower whatever we have and then we sit in the table and we say that thank you thank you to the lord or god like for giving us this food but i want to go a little bit further when we talk about this gratitude with the questions like what is there in this universe that we are not thankful for because like when we talk about the cauliflower there is this farmer who do the farming and who make the cauliflower grow and the, the soil, the minerals in the soil that the plants absorb and the rain and the clouds which are making the rain, even the sun was making the rain for it to fall down. So when we look at all the things, how many, how many of the things it goes beyond beyond the person we see for example like i am thankful to my parents for giving birth to this life but like we all are here because of all the forces we can see and which we cannot see touch or not touch in this universe so i want to say that gratitude is something like you know not only the person you can see or not only the thing you can touch so it should be gone as a kind of a ripples that start and then all the things in the universe, all the forces, and we should be grateful for. And then I hope that all the listeners and everyone who are part of this show and will be seeing it in the future that as a human being, if we can practice our compassion and kindness and gratitude, even in a small way, every day, even for a second in this 24 hour in a day. So I think we all should do that so that it's a, for a better human community, which our society really needed for the universe. So I would like to express my this idea to practice this kind of small gratitude, to be kind and to be mindful about everything that yeah. our feelings. Absolutely. So, I absolutely agree with your thoughts. Uh, and like I said uh, and shared, you know, a little bit earlier, many of the books from wise people, um, you know, they have shared that gratitude could go a long way. And in fact, uh, you know, we have already started with this 1001 Gratitude Project. Uh, but I would love to get in into schools and sit down and yes, work with, you yeah, know. This is, yeah. yeah. And, you know, like. Um, this, is, this is one of the issues that I really, I mean, like I was really thinking about, especially the children starting 
you know to start teaching them about this about you know practicing them in a way so that you know they can carry on until when they become adult like, you know we yeah. get so embraced and shy sometimes <laughs> you know we, we, we don't have this kind of culture especially right. in manipur right. to say something very openly in that way so right. that's why i'm very thankful for this so so i see that uh, your father is a principal of a school yes, yes. so would would yeah. you I, you know when i saw that i was just thinking in my mind that hey you know <laughs> i don't know if you would be interested but i definitely would love to tie up with some school to start the gratitude yes, workshop yes, yes, and yes. maybe you should request your father yeah, about this yes, and we can I, do that together yeah i have started a small small those living in the hostel in the school so we have started small gatherings and talking about all this kind of gratitude and there are so many interesting projects which i got to know during my uh, service journey and about the 21 days kindness project and yeah. you know, playing the cards playing the cards which have written different kind of random kindness of x so i'm just starting with the children in my dad my father's school so yeah i'll be very happy to you know <laughs> so we can do something awesome awesome i'm so excited yeah. good good all right so um yeah. in the interest of time is there anything else before we get closer to our excellent awesome show today <laughs> yeah so i just want to say thank you to the universe all the forces known and unknown for to make for making this moment possible thank you thank you yeah. for being a part of finding the voices thank you for sharing your voice um it is important that we share our thoughts and that's the only way we all can connect together and i am 100% sure and i believe that this is going to bring out the positivity to the peak and um have a change you know bring a change to the situation in manipur um it's a different way of our protesting i guess uh, you know to bring yeah. peace and positivity so thank you so much saya and i look forward to thank see you so much, working yeah working together in more yeah. projects to come and for our listeners today thank you so much and um, i am very excited that we could actually complete the whole Uh, recording for today's show which is a video conferencing between me i'm sitting right here in uh, united states and saya was sitting in thobal manipur and it did not get interrupted and i see <laughs> that you know the quality seems quite good so thank you so much uh, keep tuning in for uh, more uh, gratitude in our 1001 thagatseri project thank you have a good day <laughs>